the audio market has been growing exponentially across the globe and in India over the past few years. With options aplenty, consumers may find themselves perplexed as to what headphones truly offer the best performance in the sea of contenders. At Digit, we are obsessed with bringing you the answers to these questions by backing up our claims with objective data. Each product we test gets a score out of 100 and it isn't some arbitrary number we just stumble upon. It represents hours of testing on our end at the Digit Test Labs. We use industry-grade equipment to provide us with hard and cold facts and data about each earphone we test. While it is common to see subjectivity creep up in audio reviews, we at Digit have found ways to inject substantial levels of objectivity into our audio tests. So you don't just have to take our word, our opinion, our thoughts and run with them. We attempt to provide consumers with a review that not only relies on subjective analysis, but also has a good amount of objectivity sprinkled in. In a market practically saturated with countless audio products, the tests we put our earphones through will bring out their sound signature so the consumer can decide if it is really their cup of tea or not before pouring their hard-earned money into it. So, let us walk you through the array of stringent tests we conduct at the Digitest Labs when testing audio. Every earphone we get for review is thoroughly used and tested for several days. During this period, we use the product as our primary headphone to listen to music, take calls, for voice recordings, when playing games or watching OTT content. This gives us a comprehensive picture of how the headphone performs in various scenarios. First, let's begin with how we test sound quality. We use a flat class 1 frequency response microphone from SLS Audio in Denmark, dubbed the iSemcon EMX7150. It is a free field omnidirectional measurement microphone with a frequency range of 10 Hz to 20 kHz which covers the human hearing spectrum. This is coupled with the 7mm Mimi M in-ear testing adapter from the same company. This adapter comes with an EPDM rubber coupler and is custom designed to fit and seal IEMs or in-ear headphones snugly when measuring. The earphone along with the microphone is then placed in a custom-built isolation chamber to drown out ambient sounds. This setup is connected to our audio interface, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. All of this is then hooked up to a PC running the Smart DIV2 software by Rational Acoustics. The software allows us to accurately measure the frequency response or the sound signature of the earphones we test using the equipment we've mentioned before. It produces a frequency response graph that details the output of the earphones across the human listening spectrum, that is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. To measure the frequency response graph, we play a flag file of pink noise, which is compared against a completely flat response output of the same pink noise file. This allows us to visualize the deviations in the sound signature of the earphones from a neutral sound signature in the lows, mids and highs. The more the deviation, the lesser the earphone scores in our sound signature test. Additionally, since no headphone has a completely flat response sound signature, we also compare the earphone sound signature to a reference IEM that has a close to neutral sound and score it accordingly. The test ultimately indicates the earphone sound signature and allows us to determine whether it is warm, bright or neutral. The earphones are primarily tested in their default EQ setting since most consumers would use this setting to listen to music. However, we also test them on various EQ settings using our equipment to determine which EQ setting is actually the closest to the target flat response. We also use our setup to calculate the loudness level of the earphones, which is measured in dB or decibels. Each test is run at least three times to ensure there are no wild fluctuations in the readings that would indicate a problem with our setup or the IEMs themselves. This test is what allows us to arrive at a truly objective score, one that is devoid of reviewer bias. 
Objective testing is extremely important to eliminate bias when reviewing earphones. But subjective analysis is also important to get a more real-world picture of how the earphones perform in several aspects. We listen to a predetermined list of tracks covering all bases to analyze the sound signature, isolation capabilities, sound stage, imaging, and separation of the earphones. We not only listen to high-quality FLAC files when testing, but also use the earphones to listen to tracks on streaming services such as Spotify and YouTube Music to see how they perform on these platforms. As for the earphones' microphone performance, we understand that this is a very important parameter for several consumers when buying earphones. So we test the microphone's capabilities extensively by checking call quality over Wi-Fi and mobile network. Not only do we test the microphone quality on normal phone calls, but we also put them through the ringer and test them on platforms such as WhatsApp, Zoom, Google Meet and others. These calls are recorded and then checked for distortion, muffled sound and disturbances from ambient sounds. We also check the microphone intelligibility by voice dictating in the Notes app to see whether the microphone picks up words accurately. Moving on to wireless connectivity, we start off by testing the line-of-sight wireless range of the headphones. We connect the headphones to a source device, usually a smartphone, and then test the wireless range in a large open area to figure out the unobstructed range of the headphones and if they corroborate with the manufacturer's claims. We measure the distance until the wireless connection gets too weak to reliably transmit audio without quality drops. The distance is measured at least three times and then averaged out. Additionally, we also test the wireless distance in a more obstructed environment such as a house or office to relay a more real-world scenario. We also test for noticeable latency by watching OTT content on platforms such as Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video and others or by playing games such as Battlegrounds Mobile India, Call of Duty Mobile and others. Lastly, we thoroughly test the battery life of wireless headphones to give consumers an idea of what they can expect. Often, manufacturers exaggerate their battery life claims and our tests aim to provide users with an accurate representation of real-world battery life. In order to conduct our battery tests, we firstly charge up the headphones to 100%. After this, we connect the headphones to our testing iSEMCON microphone and play an infinite loop recording from a source device such as a smartphone. The smartphone is connected to a charger throughout the duration of the test to ensure it doesn't run out of battery. The test begins at 100% battery and runs until the headphone completely runs out of power. We review the recording to see exactly when the audio stops playing to arrive on a tested battery life number. This brings us to the end of our performance testing process for audio products. We use this rigorous and systematic approach to testing with a mixture of objective and subjective analysis to ensure that the customer gets a clear idea of how a device actually performs. We also modify our tests on a regular basis to ensure that the results we derive are as insightful as possible. So before you scour the market for your next pair of headphones, be sure to check out a digit review of these headphones to know if you should take the plunge. That's it from our end. Thank you so much for watching.